Hey everyone, as you can see, I'm in my mobile office, aka my work truck, uh, and I just wanted to put together a little beginner fire capture tutorial. Uh, you open up the folder, there's fire capture. If you don't have a camera connected and you want to follow along after you download it, uh, you'll click dummy cam. If you do have your own camera attached to it and it doesn't auto detect, then you can select your brand from this list right here. Oh, look at that, there's a planet. The only problem with this is that you won't see any change in the histogram from the dummy cam. So you don't really get a sense of, you know, what changing the settings will do until you actually have a camera attached and you do it yourself. But we'll try to make the best of it. So you open it up, starting out, I would open up the settings, it's capture settings. Okay, your capture root directory is the main folder where the files are gonna go. And then the file name will have the planet date filter, which right now is RGB selected, and then universal time. If you select the WinJupos file name, then WinJupos will know exactly where to place your planet as far as how far it's rotated in that sequence whenever you go to get to that point. Just go ahead and click it. You can exit out of it. Image size. Uh, the dummy cam has a max size of 640 by 480. Now, chances are the camera that you get or the camera that you have is going to be at least twice that, if not three or four times the size, depending on which camera you have. What that means is, you know, Jupiter might look this big, but your full sensor will take up this much of the screen. Uh, but with this one being 640 by 480, that's all we got. What I like to do is I will leave the maximum resolution available. And that means that your black window will take up, your sensor will take up the whole space. I will select cutout. So now what cutout will do is depending on how big of an area you select, it will keep the object number one centered and number two, it will only record what is inside of this white box. So let's just say you have your max, uh, your maximum resolution selected and your window takes up this entire space here. If your planet is, you know, we'll say this big and your box is that big, then all you have to do is keep this white box inside of the black box. And it's much easier to see when you have your own setup. In order to change it, then I mean, you just click and drag. This comes in super handy. Like, let's just say your mount's not tracking exactly, or you know, you're doing an animation, or you're doing several sequences for stacking, and when you post later, you won't have any kind of jumpy recording or anything. It'll just be that recording into auto stacker and beyond so you have your planet and you have your cutout window now let's talk about your control turn gamma off gain so if you have your own camera hooked up you'll notice that somewhere in this line there will be a slightly darker gray line that's your default setting instead of sliding over to get to it you can just double click on that icon and it'll automatically go to your default I would start there. What exposure do you need? Well, for that, you look at the histogram. So right now, you can see that we're 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, right at 70% on our histogram, which is perfect for Jupiter. Depending on your telescope and your camera and the you know weather conditions and all that, I would suggest between 50 to 80%. So. 70s perfect so leave your gain at default and your exposure you want to select an exposure that gives you enough histogram but at the same time enough frames per second 
So you have to find that balance of longer exposure time with less noise, shorter exposure time for more detail. And that's just an experiment that you are gonna have to do for your telescope and your camera and your seeing condition. So if you watch, when I change the exposure, so right now we're at 35 frames per second. So if I go up to get a brighter picture on my histogram, you see how drastically that drops the frames per second. But it would make your histogram go up where you need it to. If you lower, now you can see we're up to 70 frames per second, which is great. I mean, anything over 60 is good. Now, from your default gain setting, you could bump it up a little bit. I would not go excessive. The higher the gain, the noisier the capture. The lower the gain, the less noisier the capture. But it will also be dimmer. The higher the exposure time, the brighter and less noisy it is. But the more detail you will end up losing because the, the reason that planetary imaging is often called lucky imaging is because you're trying to catch the details you know so if you take 30 frames a second and that second maybe only two of those frames will be sharp and the rest of them are garbage so obviously the faster you can take pictures the more sharp frames you're going to get in a given time period and you can't shoot indefinitely because jupiter rotates so fast i mean you need to keep jupiter below uh two minutes uh, i would go with 90 seconds for mono when you're shooting rgb i i shoot 30 seconds per uh, color channel so now you have your histogram you have your settings all that stuff done so right now i can uh shoot 83 frames a second max. And this is giving me my actual frames per second. I've captured and saved zero because I haven't recorded anything yet. Your buffer, let's just say for instance, I'm shooting Jupiter and I'm shooting at 350 frames a second. If I can't write the frame to the disk drive faster than I'm capturing them, then this buffer will drop. And if it gets down to zero, then eventually you'll just be shooting whatever frames per second, the amount that you can process, that your computer can process at that time. Your disk drive, this is how much storage you have left for the capture folder that you're shooting into. So now here we get to our histogram. You can see the individual color channels, the blue, green, and red. You can see them on here. You can also see it over here. I like using this one over here because you can compare the chart to these lines. Each line is 10. D Bayer. If you have a color camera and you select D Bayer, you click this box here, you can select the Bayer pattern from your camera just for a preview. Whenever you go to capture, you want to turn D Bayer off and capture in mono. I use the mono camera, so I don't need to worry about that. We have the window set to max. We have all of our settings. We have our cutout. So this is gonna be the final file size. I shoot AVI, I don't shoot SCR. Okay, let's just say you do have a mono camera and you have your RGB filters up here. Before you go to shoot your first frame, set up all of your filters and their settings because what works for the red will not work for the blue. So what you will end up doing is, is your red frame will use a certain gain. I set up your red, let's just say 100 frames a second. So now my red is set up. Now I'll go to green. You know, also around 100 frames a second. The blue will be dark and noisy. It will also look pretty bad. In that case, raise your gain a little bit and then that way you can keep your frames per second relatively fast. So you might be thinking, well, let's say I'm shooting 50 frames a second with the blue. I could just shoot twice as long and have the same number of frames to work with. No, because Jupiter rotates too fast. And a color window, let's say a minute and a half, 90 seconds to shoot a color sequence. Whether that's 90 straight seconds of shooting RGB or 30 seconds shooting red, 30 seconds shooting green, and 30 seconds shooting blue. Past that, your the planet is going to spin too fast and your details will smear. You don't want that. 
30 seconds is all you get. So if you got to increase the gain to compensate for the exposure, then that's what you got to do. So now with all of your settings set, 30 seconds, all your settings up here are set, everything's good to go. Go to your red filter, record, and then green filter, record, blue filter, record, rinse and repeat, five to eight sequences. If you want to use Winjupos, if you want to use just one, then shoot RGB and there you go. Also keep in mind, the red and green channels are fairly similar when you capture the blue channel, you will have to refocus. I refocus between every color. So we have red with those settings, 100 frames a second. I got my capture folder set and we will hit record. And we're back. All right, well, there you go. That is a very quick tutorial on how to get started in fire capture. If you don't have a camera yet, or if you want to download fire capture and play around, you have Jupiter, uh, Mars, and I believe Saturn to work with. While we're here, you can see how shaky Mars is. Your cutout box, see how it bounces around? It's keeping Mars dead center of that cutout box. So as long as you keep it in this window, then your end result video that you put into Auto Stacker, Mars will be right in the center of that box. This is an instance where I would use Auto Align. See, so now, we can take the cutout box off. So if your mount is tracking dead on, then you can use auto align and then you just keep these four red dots. This is helpful for focusing because it's really hard to focus when the plant's doing that. So that's where I'd use the auto align box. While we're here, let's see Saturn. Oh, look at the rings. Anyway, well, I hope everybody has enjoyed this little short tutorial on how to get started in fire capture. The next video will be how to get started in Auto Stacker, and I will see y'all later.